morning. Morning, buddy. What do you call this? <laughs> oh, look, violet and everything. How long have you been up? Since well, between five and half five. Oh my god. <laughs> Nine now, just so everyone knows. <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, yeah. You, yeah, I'm just catching up on the amount of sleep you had. That <laughs> <laughs> is true, that's probably why I was up so early. <laughs> yeah, nothing to do with the wine. <laughs> Swedish Andy Well, we've just left our island campsite and um, we're now heading across the lake to the eastern shore of the lake um, where there's another campsite and um, we'll spend the night there tonight. It's not too far away, just a short paddle today. We both had a good night's sleep last night. Um, <laughs> whether that was the comfort of my hammock or the wine, I don't know, but I slept well and uh, had a nice breakfast of bacon and eggs this morning, which is lovely. And uh, yeah, potted about on the island for a bit. We had some hail, as you saw in the video. And uh, we just waited for a bit of a break in the weather before heading across the, across the lake. There is a bit of a breeze today on our backs. Um, so the lake is a little bit lumpy, not too bad. But uh, yeah. Nice. There are some sinister looking clouds rolling in though, so I dare say we may, up get, may end up getting wet at some point. I've uh, just switched cameras. I put my big camera away, GoPro out, waterproof on because I think we're about to get wet. We're only halfway across the lake, so uh, I thought it best to film the rest of this bit on the GoPro.
Well, as we expected, the uh, heavens are just starting to open. It's hail. <laughs> of course, it would be. It might not last. We've just come into this bay. This is um, where our campsite is, just up ahead there. And we're gonna head there now. Yeah, lovely and calm. You can actually hear yourself think. The hail stopped, although there'll probably be more. Well, we've just um, arrived at the kind of designated camp spot. Neither of us are very happy with it. There's a, a toilet and a bin, and uh, well, that is the fire pit. Um, and really, yeah, there are a few trees around, but there's nowhere flat that Andy can set up. You know, he's gonna be under a tarp and his bivvy. Um, there's not really a lot of options here. There's not really even options for my hammock, really. So uh, I think we're gonna get back into canoes and we're gonna head back down the lake the way we came. Um, that way we can, uh, we can make a bit of ground and uh, that'll be less paddling to do in the morning. Yeah. Yeah, the uh, campsite that we were gonna use for tonight, um, when we arrived there, it just wasn't really suitable. It was just kind of like a, I don't know, a gravel loggers track, and it was just a hut at the end of the track, really. <laughs> um, I mean, yeah, you know, if push came to shove, we could have, we could have used it, but we're gonna head back um, in the direction of Ed, where we started from, and um, we'll just find somewhere to, to wild camp tonight, I think.
pretty brutal coming across there. That was choppy, that was a quite a, head, quite a strong headwind and very, very slow progress. <laughs> oh, well done, buddy. Okay, hopefully, I think we might have found our spot here. Let me go and check it out. Which is reasonably sheltered, actually, behind this lump of rock just here. Yeah. Looks good to me. Well, Andy's got a fire going, which is well needed. That last bit seemed to go on forever, didn't it? We're both pretty knackered. It's been a, it's ended up being a really full, long day of paddling. Yeah, 2K turned in singles. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. With all that headwind and stuff, it's been knackering. Um, I've just moved the canoes around to a, a sheltered little spot, which is quite right close to where we're um, where we're going to camp. Just there. We didn't see it because it was on the other side of the headland when we pulled in. But um, yeah, this will do the job nicely. But first we're going to warm up a bit. We're going to get maybe a hot drink on the go. Nice hot sugary cup of tea. And uh, then think about shelters up. Serious firewood mission in a minute. <laughs> so we've gathered up a load of firewood here. Um, just where we are, or behind where we are rather, there's a whole area of the hill there that's been cleared. It's been logged. So uh, yeah, we've just been and been and picked some of the um, bits that they left behind. I think I found a good spot to set my hammock up. Um, so that's next job really. Um, get my tarp up, get my hammock up, and then uh, maybe think about getting some dinner on. We actually skipped lunch today. Oh, it, was, <laughs> it was such a full on day. We kind of stopped and snacked on um, some beef jerky and some biscuits and stuff, but we didn't really stop, stop, if you know what I mean. Um, you know, just uh, eager to kind of find somewhere to set up for the night, so. Yeah, looking forward to a decent meal tonight.
Well, all the chores are done. We've got firewood, we've got a fire, we've got our shelters up. Um, and I really need refueling, Andy, how about you? Definitely. Um, I bought some dehydrated meals with me from the UK um, that was sent to me. I mentioned this the other day on my breakfast, when I was doing my breakfast. Um, they're these Mountain House freeze-dried meals. We're gonna just have one of those each. Um, Andy's gonna have Italian-style pepper steak with uh, rice and tomatoes. Um, and I'm gonna have chili mac with beef. These are big portions. These are two and a half, two and a half portion bags. Um, so, uh, you know, we've been paddling all day long. I think we've deserved them. We might even have some pudding as well. <laughs> so yeah, I'm gonna get on with this. You know, they're just so easy. Add boiling water into the bag. Um, leave for whatever, 10 minutes. And, um, and they're good to go. Got the blue cheese. Aye. <laughs> I'm try a little first, see if it goes. A black and blue steak, I'm sure. I'm not going to be so elegant. <laughs> this is um, squeezy blue cheese. It is the nicest thing on planet Earth. I'm taking this some of this back to England as that's, well. That's a good mix. I'm adding it. <laughs> I wanted to make sure. Good. So we've just been watching this uh, this bank of what looked like mist coming in. And uh, visibility is just gone. You can barely see the other side of the lake. You can't see the island that we were on last night at all. And uh, it's now started, started sort of, I don't know whether it, yeah, well, it's snow. It's snowing. There is a storm a coming. So it's time to batten down the hatches. We've just put everything that we don't want to get wet. Um, in our shelters and we've just left the barrels out because obviously they're waterproof it doesn't matter about them and uh oh, yeah time to get undercover i think
Well, I thought um, before we head off this morning back to um, back to the canoe outfitters, I'd better show you my last bits of kit. Um, so this is kind of my first aid, emergency, and bits and bobs kind of section, if you like. I've got a first aid kit with me in a waterproof uh, dry bag. This is a Life Systems um, first aid kit, but I've added to it. It's compartmentalized um, into medication and accessories, bleeding and breaks, and then gloves and, and information in the bottom. So you already get in there um, a load of bandages and plasters and paracetamol, uh, tape, um, antiseptic wipes, a pair of scissors, tweezers, information, a whole load of stuff. Um, I've, I took the scissors out because I wasn't very keen on them and I've added some of these um, surgical shears which are good for cutting through clothing in an emergency. I also added a foil survival blanket. That's one of two that I've got with me. Um, I added some additional medication um, and some hot hands um, hand warmers because they're just good for warming up thinking specifically about cold water. Um, in the bleeding kit I also added some antiseptic cream, some Savlon and some tubes of wound seal which is a, a blood clotting agent. Um, you know if you get a cut and you can't dress it with a plaster and it just keeps bleeding you can sprinkle this stuff on and it encourages the clotting um, which is pretty important when you're out in the middle of nowhere away from help. Um, I've also put in um, a small stainless steel mirror because um, I'm forever getting stuff in my eyes and um, it's just helpful if you need to hoik something out and I've got one of these Victorinox Swiss cards um, which is super useful because it's got a small pair of scissors which are really hard to get out a small tiny pair of scissors um, for cutting plasters and things um, and it's got tweezers so I took the tweezers and the scissors out that were in here and I've got my tweezers in here and I've got my shears and I've got those small um, scissors in here. So that is the first aid kit. Um, in addition to that I also put in here um, an emergency trauma bandage. It's designed for military use, it's designed for gunshot wounds. It's just basically a load of wadding and you, you bandage it up tightly and then there's, um, there's a bar on it which you can then pull over itself again and it really holds that bandage on super tight and it's supposed to supposed to staunch the bleeding. So um, that is my that is my first aid kit. I mean, you know, it's not a complete first aid kit, but I figured it's enough for us um, to cover the main kind of hazards that we're going to encounter out here, which is going to be mainly cuts because we're dealing with sharps. You know, we've got knives, we've got axes, we've got saws. Um, burns, oh there's burn gel as well, sorry, in my first aid kit I forgot to mention, burn, burn dressings and burn gel. Um, and that's one of the other hazards obviously working around an open fire. Um, and obviously the cold. Um, you know, this lake is really bloody cold. <laughs> I don't know what temperature it is, but you know, if you fell in there, it, it would be a real issue. Um, and so with that in mind, you know, I've got stuff in here, but I also have another kit. Um, this is what I've, I've just called my dunk bag and I wear this clip to my buoyancy aid and um, it has a whistle on it for attracting attention. <whistles> it's also in a dry bag and this is basically just a kit for if one of us goes in. Um, you know, you need to get back to shore quickly. In here I have a dry pair of gloves, uh, merino gloves. I have uh, a, a small merino beanie hat because they'll just be dry to get on. I have a survival blanket. I have two more of those hot hands and I have the means to get a fire going super quickly. We're obviously surrounded by forest here. There's loads of wood around, um, but these fire plugs in here are, um, they're impregnated with a, a really flammable wax um, made by um, Hangar 51. And these, I mean, they just take the smallest of spark and burst into flames and they, they burn really, really well and um, almost guaranteed to get a fire going. So that is my dunk kit. The other thing that I brought with me is a possibles pouch. And this just kind of contains all those little items that I don't want to lose in the bottom of my dry bag. So I've got my fire steel is in there when it's not on my belt. I've got my wallet. 
I've got my head torch, which is my, my new Olight. This has been fantastic on this trip. Really just chucks out loads and loads of light. I, reach, I charged it up before we came away and I've used it every night for you know several hours and it is you're not showing any signs of the battery dying so it, you know it does it does last really well um, I've got one of these little L Nemo Lumo lantern things which I just hang up in my hammock for just a bit of light there when I'm getting into bed and stuff I've got some oops, I've got some cordage here for just in case I've got a small amount of tin foil um, because that can be useful for various things tissues another pack of tissues um, this is a small rucksack folding rucksack and I use this on the flight out here um, as as my hand luggage bag but obviously once I was here I didn't need it which is why it's in here but that's just a small rucksack uh, my keys spare batteries for my um, uh, camera light torch which I didn't end up using um, a small uh, repair kit so that's just needles safety pins and thread my bellows for getting the fire going, a DC4 sharpening stone, um, a mosquito net, head net, which I didn't end up using. Mosquitoes have not been an issue at this time of year. They just uh, they just aren't any around. You know, we haven't seen a single one. Maybe maybe I saw one the first night, I think. Um, but yeah, I haven't seen any. Tinder card, which is just um, a fire lighting, waxed fire lighting card. And that is it. So that is all my gear. The only thing I haven't shown you is my camera gear, but I figured, you know, people are probably less interested in that. Okay, we're just about to head off. We've left the camp pretty much as we found it, but with a bit of extra firewood. There was some here when we arrived, so we were able to get a fire going, but we didn't use all the firewood that we collected yesterday, so there's some there, and there's a load packed up there. The fire pit was already here, and, uh, we were camped over there in those trees. Well, we've just got the last little paddle back to Ed and the canoe outfit is at Canadel. So um, I'm gonna sign off here. We've had an absolutely fantastic time. A real mixture of events and weather. You know, we had uh, that day when Andy wasn't very well. Um, we've had some fantastic paddling. We've stayed in some great spots last night's I really liked it was a little bit a little bit kind of uh, windswept but there was just enough shelter for us but the uh, the actual huts themselves um, you know they're just uh, absolutely fantastic they're so well set up um, you know facilities there brilliant really great weather wise I mean we've had everything <laughs> Everything every day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It just change, <laughs> changes so just like that. You know, it can be like it is now, blue skies, sunny, um, still chilly. And then, you know, 10 minutes later, it can just all go. Boom. Weather comes in, hail, strong winds. The lake just turns into a bubbling turmoil. And um, yeah, completely different. But it's good. I like that. I like a bit of variety and I like the challenge of the weather as well. Good to experience it, isn't it? Definitely, definitely. Um, we haven't seen huge amounts of wildlife while we've been here. I was kind of kind of hoping to see a, a moose or a beaver. You heard some wolves, didn't you, one night? I did, I did. Night. Yeah, I woke up in the middle of the night, I heard them very far to the west and they set off a dog that was also in the distance. Yeah. We've seen, uh, we've seen some moose poo, just on that last campsite where we were, there were some piles of moose poo, so they are around, but you know, I guess 
they know we're there way before we know they're there and they make themselves scarce. But yeah, it's been really good. It's been a superb trip. Thank you, Andy. Thank you, Simon. I, I can't think of a better man to have shared this experience with. Cheers, buddy. Ditto! <laughs> <laughs> right, well, thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed the video. And um, I'll see you soon. Thank mm -hmm. you.